behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from playing sports to exotic whips. Ain't gotta tell me, dog. I know I'm the shit behind the bar. My life is more than money and jewelry. My story's so crazy, dog. I said make a movie behind the bar. I went from music exec to this podcast. Now I finally feel at home and left behind the bar. You are now listening to Behind the Baller, episode 18. Motherfuckers went, went and turned legal on you. Fully grown, we adults now. Episode 18. Yo, I am your host, Ben Baller. Not Ben Humble. Yo, what's going on, man? We are live and direct from Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Or technically, I guess, McLean, Virginia, if you don't know where that is. This is Northern Virginia. We are in Fairfax County. I went to Fairfax High School. It's only right. You know what I'm saying? We are about 20, 25 minutes outside of D.C. Yeah, man, you know, one of my best friends, Paul, is getting married. And uh, I'm out here. You know, I'm out here quite often. I think I'm out here about four or five times a year. I always I always fuck with Nova. You know what I'm saying? Nova, I fuck with the DMV. Y'all already know. If you fuck with me on social media. Um, in fact, it's funny because Paul, I mean, right now, currently lives in um in Annandale. And it's just random as fuck because Annandale is a predominantly Korean area. It's a lot of fucking Koreans actually in Fairfax County. It's a lot of Koreans out here. And uh, they got a little Korea town out here, which is Annandale. You know, they got Honey Pig and all the other fucking uh, Kogi Cheeps and shit and stuff and everything. And they got like boba spots and everything, right? And um, I was going to tell you about something, but then I realized, you know what? My privacy is probably more important. So check it out, man. Thursday, you know, I was in L.A. for a full 24 hours. My kids were going fucking crazy. Um, damn, I miss my kids so much. It's crazy. Uh, I fell asleep with Ryder. Ryder used my chest and everything as a pillow. He was driving me nuts. I, I Man, that's my little boy right there. And, of course, I love London. Everyone is like so different. I have different relationships with all my kids. And then um, in the morning when I was getting ready on Thursday to like kind of, not Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, I was trying to get ready to run some errands ahead to my store and everything. And Kaya, she caught, like, she just didn't want to let me go. And it's just, fuck, man, you know, it's tough. And, um, you know, she wanted to hang on the man cave for a while. But then she goes down there and starts tearing shit up. You know, I mean, how do you tell your kid, this, don't touch anything, it's expensive. So I just try not to have Kaya down there. Um, London and Ryder, they understand that they can't go down there and fuck around because they'll get fucked up. So, um, yeah, man. So, you know, handle some business, get on the plane, boom. As soon as I get on the plane, um, I changed my flight from the red eye Wednesday night to Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Um, I get into an Uber at 5 a.m. and there's traffic on the 405. I couldn't fuck, I couldn't fucking believe it. At 5 fucking a.m. there's traffic. It's unbelievable. So um, I get to the airport and, uh, you know, I'm at the airport a lot. Um, LAX, I try to avoid, but recently I can't just because of certain things. And you know what, man? If I could save more than 800 bucks sometimes, then then I'll take LAX. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if it's like a $500 price difference, then, I, then I'm going to Burbank. I'm just, I just can't. I can't. It's, it's not. And, and that's the, that's me being cheap. You know, sometimes I can fuck around and literally lose $50,000 on something and then I'll complain about twenty seven dollars. It it's but you know what? It, it keeps me balanced somehow, some way. Um, with that said, you know we'll actually we'll get we'll get into Amazon in a minute because I need to chill on Amazon. Um, I'm worse than my wife is. So I get to the airport and uh, you know people recognize me, which is it's cool. You know that's that's dope. You know and I'm I'm always willing to take a pic, but you know sometimes I'm just not and. Um, I don't know, man. It's, you know, it's weird. I'm not saying that. I don't care if anyone's mad at me because you obviously see I, I piss people off on a regular basis. Who I am online and who I am in person is, is really, it's really different, you know. Um, if I could show everything that I do on a daily basis on my on Instagram, you know, I still wouldn't. I mean, I could. I just don't. Um, I still don't post all the cars. I don't post, uh, you know, where we live and things like that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's not about saving it. It's just because it's, there's safety reasons for my children, for whatever. But anyways, you know, people ask to take pics at 6 a.m. And, and uh, you know, I just be chilling, man. I'm just a regular dude, man. I'm telling you, I don't care fuck 
how, what kind of car I drive or whatever. I just be chilling. I, I'm, you know, I was at Tyson's mall today and yesterday and I just be rolling through the mall and go grab some shit at the Apple store or whatever, go grab something from North Face. And I just walk through, I push through. You know, I've been going to the mall since I was a kid. You know, I just don't give a fuck. I've just always been addicted to, you know, kind of going through a mall, going through a liquor store. Um, I don't know. It's just weird. I like driving and cruising and stuff. Although I have not got a chance to really drive any of my cars, really, because I haven't had, you know, I haven't had fucking time. And um, my pisto was supposed to get dropped off at Gintani to get tuned and get a full exhaust. I was supposed to drop it off if we went to Tokyo. Then I was supposed to drop it off while I was here in D.C. And um, I don't know. Alex, I'm going to fuck with you soon. Uh, podcast listeners, I was curious. If you guys are interested in cars, hit me on the DM. All right, hit me on the DM and say, yeah, we want to hear more about cars and we want to talk. We want to hear about the people who tune the cars and everything because my boy Gintani wants to jump on the show. And I don't know if that's going to make for interesting, uh, you know, conversation. Uh, some of you guys like Jeffo, some of you didn't. I don't know, man. It was 15 minutes. It was real quick. He was with me. That's my dog, you know, and uh, it's my show, but whatever. Um, get on the plane, uh, first class, and um, Alaska is like 50-50. Alaska purchased Virgin Airlines, right? I used to love Virgin. I remember when Virgin first came out first class, when they first started, it was like, they were like the rave, you know, cool EDM type vibe and shit. And like, you know, their first class had the, you know, the, the reclining, like, um, you know, laid it almost life flat, but like they had like the flyest domestic first class planes, period. Virgin Atlantic is no motherfucking joke. That's a whole different, different company. But um, yeah, man, you know, um, I get on the plane and instantly... The girl sitting next to me, she happens to be a heavy set, larger woman. And um, she has a service dog. And, uh, you know, I got to think, there's all these scams going on with service dogs. Why, you know, people are like, oh, are you fat shaming? No, I'm not fat shaming. Listen, I'm big. You know what I'm saying? Someone's bigger than me. You know, it's too fucking bad. It is what it is, man. So I'm be like, yo, why, why they got to be black people? Because they're black. You know, why they got to be motherfuckers? Because they're motherfuckers. Why they got to be Asian? That's just what they are. I just call it what I see it, you know, whether it's not nice or not. I mean, I'm not here to be liked. I want you guys to understand that. I am not here to be liked. Your opinion of me is none of my business. Okay. So anyways, she had a fucking attitude getting on the plane. I'm like, yo, I'm just sitting here chilling. Like, you know, my feet were up. I get it. But it's like, you know, if that was rude or whatever, just say, excuse me. So it's like, you know, for like four and a half, five hours, we got this drama. It's like, is it really worth it? Shit is fucking stupid. So I fell asleep and uh, I fell asleep for like three or four hours. I woke up and I was like, yo, my fucking hand was the most it's ever been asleep in my life. I've never had my foot or my hand fall asleep this bad to the point where damn near I thought it had gangrene. And I had to slap that shit in the fucking place. And I finally got my shit in order. And then this this chick eased up. And she was being cool. And I was just thinking about it like, damn, man, this dog is ill as fuck. So I started talking to her about the dog. And she told me that her dog can hold her piss for 24 hours. Now, I don't know. You know, that's just, that's just crazy, right? And I started thinking about my boy, Tony De Niro, who I brought up in my K-Town Hustler series, who he discovered, you know, uh, Caesar Milan, who's the dog whisperer. And uh, it ain't a Forrest Gump story, but it, you know, it's kind of crazy. I'm connected to that dude, and it's just weird, right? Now he has a Vegas show and shit, doing stuff. And if uh, London and Ryder have been asking for a dog for the last six months, they're going crazy. But you know, London's allergic to dogs. So we're trying to figure that out right now. We're getting London in this program right now. And don't get me started on health insurance right now, man, because we stopped the corporate health insurance with the companies, and now we do an individual. And, you know, family of five and London, you know, see his history, he goes to the hospital a lot and everything. And it's just like, you know, man, paying 3500 a month for insurance is pretty crazy when I think about it. Like, I'm wondering what the fuck. I know other families get assistance and they can get, you know, the insurance for almost free or something. But like, damn, bro, that's, you know, that's a, that's a Bentley payment. You know, it's just, just crazy. So I'm just talking about this dog. And she said for the first six months or 12 months of her dog's life, the dog was in a service training program thing, whatever, where they learn how to do this, that, and the third. And I thought about what Caesar said. Caesar said, told me, he said, yeah, give me a dog for six months and it'd be your best friend forever. And I think about that. That's a long fucking time, right? Six months. I've been in relationships that were serious as fuck to me for like six months. Do you know? I was with a chick that I got into mad drama with, and I'm sure you guys know, and I didn't want to say that dumbass bitch's name. And that was like 11 years ago and I was involved with this dumbass, stupid ass 
dumb fucking piece of shit ass bitch who um I got involved and I got to go to court and all this shit and had to go through all kinds of drama and I wasn't even with the chick for three months but this shit caused so much drama people thought about this shit and thought it was like you know a super long relationship and I was you know like it was cool you know I smashed this brought on my birthday and then I saw her again in uh, April and I'm like yo months had gone by so people thought I didn't see the girl for I don't know how many months then April to like June so let's, let's see April May June. yeah three months Less than three months, I'm, I'm with this broad, and it's like, just hell. And I was like, this is fucking drama. So six months with the puppy is a long fucking time. Um, so anyways, I land in D.C. My man Paul comes and gets me. I'm rocking my Seahawks jersey. I'm like, yo, whatever the fuck we do today, you know, we, we gonna fucking rock. We, I, I gotta go watch the Seahawks game. You know what I'm saying? I can't fucking play because I should be at the fucking stadium. And my cousin Rex is at the stadium, obviously, because we got season tickets. And uh, he took my nephew, took his son there. My nephew... Um, JP and so you know they're watching the game live and uh there's a about a 10 second delay between the real time and fucking that so a text message depending on how fast it's going you know this motherfucker's seeing a play way before me so it's kind of crazy so anyways going on I'm like yo Paul we got anything to do today you know and it's Thursday and the wedding's on a Sunday and I'm thinking the rehearsal dinner is going to be maybe you know at the earliest Friday maybe Saturday and he's like no I'll do the rehearsals tonight and I'm like when and he's like at 6 p.m. And I'm like, well, goddamn, bro, you should have fucking told me, right? Because it's 3.30 now. And I'm like, well, I got to get to the hotel. So I go to the hotel and check in. And I just hit a certain level on my point system, right? And I don't want to say the system because, you know, just like, again, it's a privacy thing or whatever. If you guys figure it out, cool, man. But I don't want to volunteer it. So anyways, you know, I hit this certain level. And that's when you um, have got to, you know, at least 30 nights in this hotel and thing is i stayed there way more than that but i never accumulated the points the proper way and i'd book through third party sites and i'd book through like amex or blah blah this and that and i was like nah man fuck this i'm gonna stay dedicated to this one brand and see what the fuck i can do because you know they got the five star hotel they got the four star hotel and they got a three star hotel i'm like all right so let me figure this all out so literally three months prior from today i decided to fucking just get focused and sure enough you know, I've stayed at other hotels, but I'm just saying, you know, like for the most part, I try my most best to do. I did 30 nights already. So I got to this crazy level and this level's on a different, you know what I'm saying? You get the free premium internet, which is, you know, $12.95 a night. You get a premium bottle of water every single day. Uh, they'll upgrade your room. You get like to get up into the private suite and lounge areas and shit. There's some, some dope benefits, you know what I'm saying? They give you the guaranteed 2 p.m. checkout. And then on the next level, which I should hit before Christmas, and some people it takes, you know, two years to get to this level, whatever. Um, I'm going to hit this bitch by Christmas, maybe even sooner. Um, I decided to get a fucking credit card. I was like, fuck it. You know, I got an 800 credit score. I'm about to get a credit card and get me some more points. Fuck this shit. So with the credit card, I think I might even fuck around and do this shit like by the end of this month by complex con so you know i get the i get this i just get more perks man and it's nice you know fucking especially good for my family and for my kids so i've been like saving up points on that too so like you know for christmas and all the other stuff and any kind of you know spring break or stuff but sometimes you can't really just rock with this you know with the spot anyways um speaking of points i just found out that i could use my chase points on amazon now my amazon problem was already bad i was buying stupid ass shit but i mean it's useful you know stuff for the podcast and stuff you know uh fyi i got my entire motherfucking um i got my entire studio my entire studio on f that fucking behind the baller podcast i got my entire studio on amazon all right amazon prime it's fucking amazing right and i just found out that i could use my chase sapphire points on amazon prime as cash like instead and if had I known that, I'd have bought my whole studio on this motherfucker for free. Because right now I have 800,000 something points. And that's how much I fucking use my card. I use my card like crazy. So you know when like I got a United card through Chase. And they're like, yeah, you get 50,000 points as soon as you sign up. If you spend $6,000 in the first three months or something. I was like, what? I spent that shit like in the first, you know, two weeks. And, um. You know, got 50,000 points there. Boom. But I started realizing, I was like, listen, man, the, the, the miles shit, United, I got, what, almost 2 million miles on United. And I'm saving because um, the first class flights cost a lot of money. Did we talk about this last time when I was talking? Oh, we did. We did. We did talk about it in episode 17. with stupid ass motherfuckers talking about private flights. But yeah, you know, I use it for the kids because some people, you know, 
the the dad and the mom to fly first and then they'll have the the kids in, in economy with like the in-laws and shit i'm like nah man i can't do that shit and uh one of my homeboys <laughs> i can't even say who he works for because dude is so fucking enormous and he has such an enormous fucking sneaker brand and just an enormous rapper he, he's the the head of the company he, he does that shit and you know who the fuck you are bro so <laughs> anyways so i checked in man and this motherfucker's talking about we got a fucking uh rehearsal dinner and i'm like bro that's about an hour and a half away from now boom and i want to take a nap and try to like you know i'm still jet lagged like kind of like i'm fucked up right I'm, I'm just getting over tokyo now i'm on the east coast so i didn't even get the three hours and whatever so he says the fucking dress rehearsals at six o'clock and i gotta get dressed i don't have no fancy shit you know what i mean i'm rocking fucking you know well i'm I'm rocking nice shit, just not fancy, right? Like, or formal. Um, I'm rocking rude. And, you know, uh, I go to fucking uh, to Uniqlo. And I get some slacks. And I get, like, a cashmere V-neck sweater. And I'm, like, dressed. I'm ready to go. And uh, we leave at, like, 5.30. Because I'm thinking it's going to be 30 minutes. And I'm thinking, wait a second. 5.30? This is, like, prime time traffic. He's like, no, don't worry about it. We get in the motherfucking car. And Paul is an enormous Tesla fan. The reason why I even fucking reached out to Elon, even though I really fucked with him at the time before, you know, all the drama happened between me and Elon Musk, I fucked with him because Paul was such a big fan of Elon's. And I was a Tesla dude. I, I owned a Tesla before Paul did. And Paul's like the biggest fucking Tesla fucking dick sucker right now. I know Paul's so, like he doesn't, you know, something bad happens with the brand, he'll, he'll, he'll suck it up. And I just, that's not me, man. Something bad happens, I call it out. That's why I did that with fucking Tesla. With, with being when I got locked in. So we get in the fucking Tesla and the Tesla map says one hour. And I told him, I said, hey, bro, we going to be late as fuck. And I know that priest ain't going to be happy. So, you know, he's trying to do everything he can. And Paul drives like a fucking side. He's as crazy as me. If not even, he might even be crazier. That motherfucker's crazy as fuck. So um, Paul is like, I don't give a fuck. I'm about to, you know, what we'll to fucking get there. And next thing you know, man, it ends up being like an hour, five hour and 10 minutes. And everyone was late to that bitch except for uh, these cold people. And I'm never late, but I, you know, this ain't my shit. So, you know, whatever. And on top of that, I'm with the fucking groom. So I ain't tripping. So we get the hell late. And uh, I'm thinking like, yo, what time does the game start? What time does the game start? And then I realize I'm like, yo, man, it's fucking 3.30 in LA. So, you know, Monday Night Football is not going to start till 5, 5.30. I was like, all right, we good for a little bit. So we do this dress rehearsal. And this wedding is done completely different from every single wedding I've been to. They're doing it like a Lebanese, not a Muslim because it's fucking we're in, we're in a Catholic church. I forgot what the hell was going on, but um, like the order of walking and how the groomsmen stand and the bridesmaids and just the way they do it and how they bow and everything was just real different. And so, you know, we rushed over there, sat in the fucking hour traffic. We do the rehearsal for maybe 25 minutes. And then they're talking about, oh yeah, we're going back to Tyson's Corner. And I'm like, motherfucker, you couldn't pick a church out here in Nova? Like, goddamn. But you know what? That's their wedding. I shouldn't talk like that, man. So anyways, um, we get back and uh, we go to this uh, this nice little restaurant. And, uh, you know, we have uh, Lebanese food, which I love. And uh, we eat and chill and everything. And I'm like, yo, bro, I got to watch this game. So I'm like, I'm watching it on my phone, right? Because I got the DirecTV app and I have NFL app and I have the NFL pass. So I'm watching it on my phone and I'm not really paying attention. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fucking funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that time. I don't remember anything they're talking about. Not paying attention to anything, being rude as fuck, watching this Hawks game. And we whooping ass, right? We were down 3-0 immediately off top, and then boom, 14-3 halftime. And then it goes to, actually, we halftime started. It was right at the end of halftime, the Rams scored. And it was 14-13, right? And I'm watching this game I'm like, yo, man, listen, what the fuck are we doing right now? I got to get to a fucking, I got to get to a sports bar or something. So we go to the sports bar in Tyson's, and uh, I go in there, and it's like a fucking Applebee's meets Friday's meets fucking a barnyard barn house fucking i don't even know man this shit was just some you know this some old virginia shit and uh i'm watching the game man and i realized the fucking dodger games on two versus the nationals so all the main tvs are dominant this is my this is fucking not my thursday night football right this is like oh it's thursday night it's not monday night bitch the same shit but because it's not their team it's not the redskins you know we have to watch fucking, you know, the Washington Nationals with the Dodgers. And I'm cool. It's just like, yo, listen, man, I fuck with the Dodgers heavy, right? But I fuck with the Seahawks right now because this is a different thing, you know? But at the same time, shit, Dodgers are in the playoffs. It's a fucked up thing. Anyways, 
I'm watching the game and I'm going back and forth. This shit's crazy. And a lot of Rams fans and people are sitting there and talking about, why are you a fucking Seahawks fan? Answer all shit. I'm tired of answering this shit. But people are like, why aren't you a Rams fan? Because let me tell you something right now, motherfuckers. All right? Off top. The Rams never represented LA until they came back here two years ago. All right? When the Rams were the LA Rams back in the 70s, guess what? Motherfuckers were in Anaheim. Anaheim ain't LA. Motherfucker ever tell me, oh, I'm from LA. Oh, where, where you live at? Oh, I live in Anaheim. Bitch, bow, slap the shit out that motherfucker. Fuck you talking about, man. That ain't fucking LA. That's Anaheim. That's Orange County. You from Orange County, bro. Fuck is you talking about, homie? So anyways, um, so yeah, I don't fuck with the Rams. Um, but, uh, you know, when the Rams were here, my boy Todd Light, my boy Jerome Bettis, boy uh, Roman Pfeiffer, they all play for the Rams and shit. And, um, you know, I'm watching the game, man. And, and the crazy part is on some of these really sketchy ass, like super close calls. Rex, my cousin, is, is hitting me up. Talking about, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah, we did it. And I'm like, oh, shit. So, you know, I'm almost being spoiled by it. And I am being, being spoiled. And I'm like, fuck it, you know? I, shit, I don't give a shit. I'm cool. Um, I, <laughs> we won. That's all that mattered. And we did good. We, we played really good. Russell looked really good. Our defense looked like shit, kind of, but because uh, it was scoring like crazy. But, yo, we, we did our thing. And it just leads me to like, yo, man, I can't wait. I cannot wait for the Seahawks motherfucking Niners game in Santa Clara at Levi Stadium. I can't wait to fucking go to that game. I'm taking my boy Scott Ferranda. He's a Filipino motherfucker from Seattle. Real motherfucking Seattle Filipino. Real Seahawks fan too. This motherfucker showed me this house in a preseason game. Bro, that shit luck. It, it looked like I thought that motherfucking picture was taken at Ceremony Mall. Bunch of Filipinos wearing blue and green. This shit was crazy. Right? And my boy Scott worked for Rude. You know, he's, he's, he, he runs like the, kind of runs the day-to-day of Rude, man. You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and, uh, man, Ruigi got a good dude with Scott, man. That's a, that's a cold motherfucker right there. So, um, yeah, we hang out at that bar until I don't know what fucking time. And then do we do something else after that? I forgot what the fuck I did. You know what I'm saying? I might have been on Pornhub. I have no idea. So we get back to the hotel. Um, I got a dope-ass corner suite with sick-ass fucking, you know, Florida ceiling windows and it's like all modernized over here and I'm looking at it right now. It's a beautiful place to podcast. It's fucking dope as fuck and I'm just checking out, you know, the view and scenery and everything and the scenery is cool and I'm just, I'm just vibing out and I just get on the internet and I start shopping and doing stupid shit and um, so, you know, Friday morning comes around and I wake up. I'm like, all right. So my wife hops on a plane and, um, you know, she's always tripping because she's, well, you know, thinking about the kids and everything. And so my wife leaves and uh, she heads over to Philly to go see her best friend. So she's flying to Philly. I sent her to Philly. And then from Philly, she's taking a train to D.C., which she should be arriving any minute. Then from D.C., she'll Uber over here. And so um, I go downstairs to uh, to um, of my hotel. I go downstairs and there's a Starbucks in the bottom of my hotel. So I go down to the Starbucks to go grab a fucking uh, vanilla latte. And uh, that's my drink with almond milk. And uh, I know I, I don't I don't have almond milk when I'm in LA because of my, my son, obviously, because of London. Um, but I do almond milk anytime I'm out of town. Otherwise, I just go uh, go regular milk. Um, I don't like soy milk anymore. I don't know what the fuck it is. I just, it don't it don't hit me the same way. So um, I go downstairs and I see like six bad, just really pretty girls, like six or seven. And they're all wearing studious outfits, but they're all form fit. Like these girls have like, either they got Brazilian butt lifts or I don't know what the fuck. All of them, I'm talking the heels is right. The fucking skirt was fucking pressed right. Now, every single one of them was bad. All of them were seven to nines, right? They were, they were legit. They were all, and they were blonde, all of them blonde and they're tall. And it was so crazy because they were rocking uh, these uh, Ithiad, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but E T H I A D. It's like it's a Middle Eastern airline, but they're like a you know their competitor direct with uh, with Emirates, and uh, th- this ain't no no punk ass airline. This is you know this is some luxury shit, right? Like Emirates is, and um, these girls are just like man, bro. Like they're in the lobby of the hotel, about to go on to Starbucks as well, and I'm staring at these girls talking, and I'm like, excuse me, how do you pronounce that that thing right there? And the, the girl acts like she don't hear me. And she's just like, she, she whatever. And I was like, okay, you, you're not with that airline? She's like, no, we're on a private chartered plane. And I was like, oh, yeah, you guys going to uh, the Middle East? And she's like, yeah, we're going to Saudi Arabia. And I was like, oh, you're going to Saudi? Okay. And of course, you know, whatever. People, oh, you shouldn't judge. Fuck you. I judge. I judge all the time. And I'm like, you got six really pretty 
blonde stewardesses about to fly over in a private, age. we're talking about so private, you're talking about a big plane, jumbo jet, you know what I'm saying, big joint, maybe an 80 passenger, whatever, but I'm talking, it was a trip to see how they were like, um, they just, you know, super, super attitude, I don't know where the fuck they were from, but I was noticing when I looked at their roller uh, bags, they had this shopping bag attached to it, and the shopping bag was a store called Blessed, which is inside the Tyson's Corner Mall, Blessed is a hype beast store. Blessed is a Supreme resale, you know, Yeezy Jordan resale shop. They sell Supreme and all that shit, everything. And these girls had, all of them had blessed bags. I'm thinking like, the fuck is these chicks, right? So finally this girl walks in with a little green juice, light skin, red bone, um, light skin girl. Real pretty as well too. And body, everything, like just shape. Again, these, these girls, whoever made their stewardess or their flight attendant, whatever the fuck the proper terminology is, whoever made their uniforms knew what the fuck they were doing. They, these girls were curved. Everything was right, like I said. And they, the girl walks in. She's light-skinned black girl. And it was funny. She was like, oh, shit. Are, are you Ben? And I heard her say that. But at the same time, I'm wearing shorts. I look crazy. I probably got eye boogers on my shit. And um, actually, I was wearing sunglasses, so it didn't matter. But I probably did. And um, I hadn't had my coffee yet. And I'm trying to talk to this one girl in front of me who's one of the six girls. And the girl says that. She was like, holy shit, that's Ben Baller. He makes jewelry for the Kardashians and for the Bieber and and for this and that and everything. And she was saying that. And the girl's like, oh, really? Now the bitch want to turn around and be like, oh, yeah. Uh, weren't you talking to me before? And I was like, nah, I wasn't. I was asking you what you were, you know, what time it was, some shit. You know, I was just, I was irritated at that point. I was like, come on, man. But it was a trip because they were shopping at a hype beast store. And I thought that was fucking hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just fucking just weird as fuck. So I get my coffee, take a hit of the VVS pen. Of course, I brought VVS out here. And Virginia is, they don't fuck around out here. D.C., you can smoke weed all day long, all through D.C. D.C., it's legal, right? Virginia, I think I mentioned it before, um, or maybe I didn't in the podcast, but, you know, they don't fucking play over here. You go, my, my boy Paul went to jail for speeding, and every mile over like 100, he had to do an extra day in jail. Shit was crazy. I couldn't fucking believe this shit. Especially with all the money Paul got now. I was like, man, you fucking tripping, bro. And when you go to court, they wear like the fucking robes, you know what I'm saying? The George Washington wigs and all that shit and everything. So there's a police officer outside of Starbucks. And I see his ass. And people are just like, my, my wife would always be like, yo, why are you getting nervous when you're around police? Because so, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to get busted for. Because, you know, I'm always doing bad shit, you know? And, you know, they could think of any kind of reason. Who fucking knows? So I just never fuck with the police, period. It's just what it is, you know. So anyways, uh, Friday, you know, we end up getting our suits um, tailor-made by Paul's uncle. And I didn't get my suit all tightened up, you know, straight and, uh, uh, like skinny and everything, right? Everyone else kind of got their shit a little more tailored than me. I wasn't tripping because I kind of gained weight, right? But I'm actually like seven pounds less than I was when I tried my suit on. So whatever it is, we got our suits, you know, we got our shoes and we all getting ready and everything else. And uh, Friday night, I went to go see my boy, uh, Michael Rappaport, because uh, Michael Rappaport was fucking, um, was doing stand-up in D.C. He was doing Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. And I was like, yo, man, I'm about to go check out my man, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go check out my guy. And uh, I went to go see him. I went to go see my boy, Rappaport. I'd never seen him do stand-up before. He's been doing it for like almost a year now. And uh, I go to this place called the D.C. Improv, and this is apparently, this is, this is the spot. This is the joint, you know what I'm saying? This is where they do like dope ass fucking, um, all the comedy. This is like where, you know, the legit comedians come. Like, uh, I saw who was going there. It was like uh, Dave Chappelle performed there. Um, coming up, that dude, Desi Banks, who's, who's like blowing up right now on the internet. He's like one of the funniest dudes on the internet. Um, I forgot what the fuck I went, but I saw Aries Spears coming there. Me and Aries go back almost, shit, man. Me and Aries go back 25 plus years. I was like, all right, cool. That's, that's dope. You know, I get to see my guy. So he goes on stage. And I'm not gonna lie to you, man. Michael was legit. He was strong, man. And I, I told, it's so funny. I told the Dust Brothers, Jordan and Miles, I said, listen, if Michael sucks, I'm gonna heckle the fuck. I don't give a fuck. I'll get kicked out. I, Cause you know what? Fuck him. Fuck that. I demand more out of Michael Rapport. You know what I'm saying? This is a dude who got me into podcasting. And if, and if he's not on point, I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna fucking say some crazy shit. But he was fucking funny. He fucked a couple people up in the crowd and he was good, man. He was he was good. If you get a chance to see Mike Rapport on tour, he's he's going all over the place. I, I suggest you see him. He was dope. And um I was hyped. And he was hyped to see me, which was even doper. 
I hung out with Mike for a little bit. We rapped, and then he was like, yo, I got to go catch my wife. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to go catch up with Paul. And uh, it was crazy because I get a FaceTime call. And um, my man Austin Rivers hits me up. And um, Austin Rivers, is with he's in Tokyo right now. Motherfucker got there two days after I left. And had I known, shit, I, I mean, I couldn't do anything about it. It's Paul's wedding, and, you know, I'm groomsman for the wedding. So um, Austin's like, yo, man, you got to give me all the spots to go shopping at, some watch spots and everything. And I connect with my boy Tadashi out there and uh, Russell Westbrook and all them. I'm like, yo, man, yeah, hit up in and see what's going on, see what's good out here. And, like, it was funny because he FaceTimed me, and this is a true story. This is an absolute true story. I knew who Austin Rivers was, never met him, you know, never, just never came across my radar. The first time I ever heard Michael Rapport's podcast, I've known who Michael Rapport has been since 91, right? So I've known who Rap was for a long time, almost 30 years, but I didn't know about his podcast until Amir, who is my Ferrari dealer, said, you got to listen to Austin Rivers talk about cars on this podcast. And I was like, the fuck? So that's when I started to listen to Michael Rapport's podcast and from there, I've been hooked. And then I went to Austin Rivers' page, and I was like, yo, this fool Austin Rivers follows me. Next thing you know, we start chatting up, boom, me and Austin become friends. Like, we become real cool friends. Like, Austin's like, you know, like, I mean, he considered me like a real friend, for real. You know what I mean? Like, you go to the crib, the whole nine. You obviously know he was on my show. And um, he hits me up on the FaceTime, and I, Mike Rapport answers the phone. He's like, where the fuck you guys at, man? What's up? Where are you guys at? And we're in D.C. And, he, and he's just like, oh, shit, man. You know, I wish you were out here. Whoop, and it was cool. So after I left uh, rap, I went to this club called Decades in D.C. And this is like their most decent club, I guess. And it was interesting. It was, it was a cool spot. And uh, I met up with um, with Paul and his boy Mike, who's actually, you know, a friend of mine, too. But he's, he's like Paul's real good friend. And he's um, also a groomsman. And so uh, my boy Eli, uh, Eli he, he kind of runs this spot. And... Um, we go in there, we chill for a little bit, pop a couple bottles, you know, they, they show with love, they throw on the Ben Ball, did the chain, like, on the on the little, like, marquee bottle, marquee and everything, and then um, we stayed there till, like, not that late, like, 2, 2.30 in the morning. We head back to Tyson's Corner, and I made a bet with Paul for $100 that the McDonald's wasn't open. The drive through was open, but not the actual, like, the in-dining restaurant wasn't open, because everywhere you go in the world, except maybe New York City, you know, they shut that bitch down like at midnight, you know what I'm saying? And if it has a drive through they'll let you order, but you can't go inside and eat, you know what I'm saying? And so, and this is Tyson, so I'm like, ain't no other fucking way. So I go on the McDonald's app, because yes, I have McDonald's app, motherfucker, I love McDonald's, even though I don't eat red meat, you know. Um, I go to the McDonald's app, and it says closed. So I make a bet for $100. And sure enough, we get to fucking Tyson's Corner, and the motherfucker's open. So I'm pissed, I lose 100 bucks, no big fucking deal, whatever. So... You know, they get their Big Macs and I get my little fucking McChicken and some chicken nuggets and we get fucking, you know, get lit, whatever. Go back to my suite and uh, Paul's got, you know, a room in my same hotel because that's where the wedding's at. And um, I pass out, you know what I'm saying? I forgot what the fucking time it was. It must have been like four or something in the morning and my wife hits me up at like 4.30 or 5. She's like, why the fuck are you still up? And I'm like, I just realized I put a story up because my homie from Russia she wrote Ben Ball did the chain in, in, in Russian. And so I put it on my page and then I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. But I was, I was up, up. So she, uh, <laughs> she, she hits me. She's like, what are you doing up? And I was like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? And she's like, okay, cool, whatever. And she goes to sleep. I go to sleep. I think I fell asleep like at 445 in the morning and everything is dark. Ain't no kids around. There's nothing. I wake up at fucking 1115 in the morning today. I have not woken up at 11.15. I don't know how long. It doesn't matter if LA time is 8.15. That's fucking just crazy, right? And on top of that, I got like seven hours of sleep or six, I forgot. It was the longest amount of sleep I've gotten in a while because I didn't sleep that good in Tokyo and I was getting a lot of breakup sleep. And um, I don't know, man. That, that was a trip. That was, you know, I woke up and it was hella late and I got a bunch of text messages, a bunch of missed messages and shit. I... um going downstairs to get my coffee this time i get an iced one right and uh kid cuddy calls me and um kid cuddy's in italy right now filming an hbo show and uh me and kid cuddy get on the phone and i don't even realize man you know when we get on the phone we start talking it's never a short conversation it's like a trip because i don't fuck with too many people and he really don't fuck with too many people like cuddy's just like fucks with so few people and me and cuddy get on the phone for fucking an hour and 20 minutes and I'm like, God damn, fuck, I need to get up and get ready because my wife's going to be here in a little bit. 
So I was like, let me jump on this podcast and start talking some shit real quick so I can, you know, just uh, give people an update of what's going on in my life. And, 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 you know, I like doing the solo joints. I like doing the weekend wrap ups and everything so that y'all can understand and what's going on with me and what, you know, I mean, people who are interested. And, you know, every week again, man, we chart, you know, top 20 in the business podcast on the, on the iOS. And, and I appreciate you guys so fucking much. You know what I mean? And um, by the way, uh, the winner of the grill is some dude I have no fucking idea, obviously, for the grail.com grill contest. Some dude, I don't know who the fuck he is, but he won. I forgot what his name is. And then my grailed closet sale went up. There's like over 53 items for sale. And now there's only 18 items currently for sale. So if you go chance, get a chance, check out grail.com. Go to the Ben Baller closet sale and check out my shit. Um, I got a $5,000 DR suit on there for $900. It's like a shiny silver gray suit. Um, you know, I got the basic shit. I got some, a lot of the really, really amazing shit has been gone. But there's still some dope things on there. And, and, and um, the prices are cool, especially they got Supreme track pants and, and shit for like $120. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like... Go out there and grab that shit. Uh, the t-shirts, Ben Baller Pod t-shirts have shipped. The first half have shipped, right? I think there's about 30 left um, for sale. Well, I, I'm not exactly sure, but there's a lot of sizes are sold out. I know that. But um, t half the t-shirts have been so shipped. The rest will be shipped out this week. Uh, the Grail Closet Sale again. Go check that out. Yo, we are less than a week away from the first time VVS is being legally sold. When I say legally I'm talking about like it's actually in a store, shop, everything, you know. We don't sell it illegal, you know, we don't sell it trap style, but VVS is being sold for the first time in LA County. Now we had some stuff in the valley and we had some stuff in downtown here and there, but I'm talking about like really in LA, you know, we're doing the official MedMen VVS collaboration launch October twelfth. Um, I believe it's two PM to three PM. It's only an hour. There'll be more info. But yeah, man, if you want to come meet me, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I think I'm going to give away a Jesus piece for people who buy online. You know what I mean? And like anyone who enters, uh, anyone who buys a VVS pen will get a ticket. And you ain't got to do nothing else. Just buy a VVS pen. You don't get lit. And then, you know, after you buy a pen, you get a ticket for free. And I'm going to give away a Jesus piece. And that's going to be exclusive for, you know, these Ben Baller podcaster homies who listen to the podcast. I expect a good turnout. We're going to bring out the VVS Bugatti. Yes, we got a, a Veer on in the VVS squad. Um, I bring out the piece that I think, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be dope, man. And uh, my boy, my boy Vandy's got to pop up that same day um, in downtown Lea, 801 Mateo Street. And um, now, nah, man, I'm excited about this VVS MedMen thing. This is big, and uh, it's only for an hour, so you know you guys can't fuck around and not show up. And it's Beverly Hills. It's right on Robertson. And uh, what else is coming up, man? I think Trump is gonna get impeached. I really do. Um, we'll get into more of that. Oh yeah, man, ComplexCon is is one month away. ComplexCon is less than a month away, and I will be releasing the Murakami collaboration there. I'm going to debut it there to the world. Um, I'll be in the same booth as Murakami as well, uh, which is actually next to Kid Cudi. So this is all like tied into each other. And um, yo, man, listen, Dust Brothers, Ken uh, Miles, my man, can you throw on a beat real quick? Because I'm about to fucking get the fuck out of here real quick. I got to use the bathroom, and then I'm going to come back. And uh, I'm going to hit you with what happened Sunday. I don't even know what the fuck's going to happen. I don't know what to expect with Paul's wedding. You know what I mean? I hope some crazy shit goes down. Um, <laughs> no offense. But yeah, man, let me hear some of that Lakey Lake. Thank you to our friends at Quip for the endorsement. Everyone needs white teeth, and Quip will help you simplify your morning and evening with their electric toothbrush. When you think electric toothbrush, you may jump to thinking pricey luxury. That's because most brands focus on flashy, unnecessary gimmicks instead of building correct brushing habits. That's why Quip was invented, to help you brush better with only the features that matter. This toothbrush has a built-in two-minute timer that pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides and help you clean your entire mouth evenly. Brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for five bucks. A friendly reminder when it's time for a refresh and to stay committed to your oral health. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. They're backed by over 25,000 dental professionals, and they have thousands of verified five-star reviews. Quip starts at just $25, 
And if you go to getquip.com forward slash baller right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack for free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash baller. So, yo, it's a Sunday. Um, lost my motherfucking voice. So, FYI, a little disclaimer. I am high and I'm drunk. Um, high off the VVS and uh, it is currently 3 a.m. Uh, Washington DC time and uh, my man Paul my boy Paul Jamil is married he is a married man now and um, I can safely say that that is probably the last wedding that I'll be involved in meaning I'll be in the wedding party a groomsman whatever the motherfucking case may be I'm not doing that shit again that's my bro and uh, not that I, listen man I've been to a lot of weddings and uh, I'm just I'm cool being in the wedding party is, is a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's a lot of work. And um, when the fuck did I, did I sign off? Was it Saturday last night? Did I, I forgot when I stopped recording. But um, went out to dinner last night with the fam. And uh, we got people from Toronto, people from Buffalo, people from Lebanon, people from Russia, all over the place. We had dinner, had drinks. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so lit right now. This is crazy. I just want to make sure I say a few things. I wrote down some notes, you know what I'm saying, so you guys have a cool Monday episode. I got my, my man George Lopez should be on the show this week. I say should because you never know with these airlines. You know what I'm saying? The airlines could fuck up. Who knows? I don't want to jinx myself. But I am recording with George Lopez this week, so uh, we should be dropping that bitch Thursday. But this is episode 18, and uh, 18 means you're fully grown. You're an adult. So because we're adults here, um, I am twisted. I'm, I'm uh, again lit off that VVS and uh drunk off that tequila and that whiskey and uh I even had some motherfucking uh Sauvignon Blanc with Sprite. That's like my old school drink. Like my little little bullshit drink. So anyways, going on man. This morning woke up, got ready, um, ordered room service of course. My wife started ironing my shirt. I don't want to come out all crunchy. Suit was, you know, tailored, everything's all good. Happy for my boy. Um, he tells me last minute, everything was fucking last minute. Everything is just it unorganized. His shit is like a, a Tasmanian devil brain is what, what's going on through his, his brain right there. Paul, that is. So I was told that, you know, get to his house at two when we head to the, to the wedding. Church, wedding begins at three. And then I get a call telling me I got to be somewhere at 12 for photos. So you know what, man? I'm always prepared. You know what I'm saying? I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. So I'm up. You know what I'm saying? I get over there. We start shooting pictures. And um, I don't really like getting pictures taken, right? So I'm just doing this for my boy. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really um, partake in every candid and all the other things. You know, let everyone else get to shine, do what they want to do. So anyways, going on, we get to the wedding. It was dope. Um... It was, a, it was a beautiful event. And then after that, we wanted to go take some pictures at the Washington Cathedral. It was beautiful. That shit looked like the fucking, looked like Notre Dame. Not Notre Dame in motherfucking uh, South Bend, Indiana. I'm talking about Notre Dame, like, you know. So, um, man, fuck, I'm fucking faded right now. This is crazy. And I uh, lost my voice, too, from screaming and shit. You ever been to a Lebanese wedding before? Them motherfuckers don't play around. Just the intro to fucking Paul's wedding was, was crazy. By the way, let me officially congratulate Paul Jamil and Julia Jamil. Hashtag Julia becomes a Jamil. Um, I feel crazy. Let me say that again. Um, it is October and I'm hyped. You want to know why? Because October is the month of my best friend, Jonas Pavakwa. Rest in peace. LRG CEO, co-founder. So I'm going to do a Jonas episode. I've been talking about it since uh, way before I even had a podcast. And we're going to discuss the life and times of the great Jonas B. Um, What else, man? So yeah, my wife is still partying somewhere with my brother-in-law and the whole fam and everybody. And so I had to break out and get this shit cracking for a little bit. Again, I feel crazy. Um, I still haven't seen the Joker. I'm going to see it. And, uh, 
fuck on everyone else's opinions. I want to see that shit on myself. I want to see what the fuck was really good. I get an alert on my phone while I'm at the wedding. Okay. I'm thinking like, you know, if I got an alert like, oh, London's sick or writer's acting up, whatever, blah, blah, you know, it would have been irritating, whatever. But, you know, that's what being a, that's what being a parent is all about, you know. So I get an alert from the Department of Water and Power saying that my electricity bill is $3,000. <laughs> now, I know that maybe some people be like, yo, that ain't that bad. But you know what? That's a, that's a Bentley payment. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a McLaren payment. For like a 570LT, maybe, you know, something light. That's just that's crazy. It, it just That kind of just had me like, the fuck? Really? But, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be around a bunch of people and everything, right? But you know what? Lately, man, I've just been on my, been on my weirdo shit. I've been on my other, you know, my, just my weirdo vibe. I'm getting ready for, for New York City. I get to New York on the, thir- no, the 14th, 13th, 13th or 14th, I forgot. You know, I got the fucking Seattle trip coming up. I got... Recording this week, I got my Medman fucking thing coming up. So, like I said, I just need to vibe out and just be around silence for a while. Can't wait to get home. I can't wait to get home, man. I'm gonna probably spend about six, seven hours just kind of just in quiet, you know, drop off my kid to school and just be on some super silent vibe shit. In fact, it's needed, super needed. Uh, got a private screening of Uncut Gems coming out to LA finally. They did a screener in New York, of course, and they did a screener in, in Toronto at the film festival. Hit a couple other film festivals, but Uncut Gems is the new Safdie Brothers film starring Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler plays the life of Joe Rodeo, famous old school New York jeweler. Um, plays a degenerate gambler as well. And, it's, you know, Kevin Garnett's in the film. It's pretty crazy. Weekends in it. Um, I had two scenes in the movie, but they cut out LA and, and Vegas. So I kind of sucked. But the cool thing about the movie is that Adam Sandler shadowed me for the part of this movie. And um, at the end of the movie, my sister went to go see it. She went to a screening and she saw that they shouted me out there in the film and they showed love. Um, yo, it's crazy. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you one of the best fucking gems I could ever give you. Never say goodbye when you're at a club, at a party, at an event. Never say goodbye. Just fucking leave. If someone asks you where you're going, say you're going to the bathroom. Even if, even if you look like you got your jacket on, you got your key, whatever, they see you grabbing your keys, just fucking shake. Don't say bye. Just fucking go. Saying goodbye takes 30 fucking minutes. And that shit is just fuck that. I don't know where I got it from. Me and Homicide have been doing that shit forever. And we'll just dip. So, a word of advice. Saying goodbye could take 30 minutes. Shit could take 45 minutes just to say goodbye. Gotta say bye to everyone. Oh, this and that. My wife is super proper and shit. And that's not really my thing. So I just dip. You know what I'm saying? I just dipped that wedding because that shit was getting too crazy. And motherfuckers started drinking um, all kinds of fucking licorice, fucking Lebanese liquor and shit and had me fucked up. And that's why I'm talking all this gibberish right now. But we getting this episode done. I'm hyped. Yo, 90 Day Fiance is on the motherfucking television right now. I can't wait to watch all this shit on, and on the hotel screen. About to order some room service, about to eat some bad food or some comfort food or some real unhealthy food. I took some wedding cake, took two slices. Yup, I didn't give a fuck. Tailored suit and all. Took two slices of wedding cake. The motherfucker was delicious. And um, about to watch this 90 day, 90 day fiance. Listen, you could judge me all you want to, but if you didn't watch that show, then you fucking tripping because that show is fucking pure genius. Whoever casts who does the casting for 90 day fiance deserves some sort of fucking golden globe award they, they are on a whole different level of talented they know how to pr- just see train wrecks after train wrecks it's just fucking amazing take my word for it show is amazing and once in a while there's actually a pretty decent there's a few decent girls on there like you know some some easy on the eyes girls on on the show show's fucking hilarious my wife put me up into the show and i was like nah fuck this punk ass show because she'd be watching like fucking like handmaid's tale and all this other like old school bullshit with them fucking curly suits and all that old British time shit. Like, that's not my shit. I just, I don't even fuck with Game of Thrones. But I fuck with 90 Day Fiance. And, um, yeah, man. So, listen, guys. That's gonna wrap up the the weekend wrap up. Um, I'm getting the fuck out of D.C. 
Love it here, but yeah, it's time to go. I gotta get, I gotta get shit popping. I got some upcoming shows. We got the Dodgers and the motherfucking, you know, trying to get to the World Series again. Um, Seahawks is about to do their thing. And uh, listen, man, this is not your practice life. I love every one of you guys. Please do me one favor. Wear those Ben Baller Pod t-shirts in pride. And please tell a friend to tell a friend and let everybody know that behind the baller podcast is the realest shit on the internet period all podcasts yo apple podcast just followed me today on twitter i was hyped you know what i mean yo god bless you guys have a great one you got to make it a great day again this is not your practice life lakey can I get something super jazzy, super funky? I love y'all.